Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to this edition of Bible Tract Echoes, the Friday edition. Thanks so much for joining us. My Bible is sitting open to the Old Testament book of Ruth. We are doing a verse-by-verse study in this book, and we come to the opening verses here of chapter 3 today. So, if at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there in Ruth chapter 3. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand, and that's the problem. It's in my hand and not in your hands. Before this broadcast gets over, I want to tell you how you can get a sample packet. It's absolutely free. Get a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. I'm going to talk about one in a a moment, but I want to put that sample packet into your hands because I want to show you the tools available to help you further your personal sharing of the gospel with the people that are around you. You may have people living in your house that do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. That's a great place to begin to show people the gospel using this tool called the gospel tract. I'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Earlier this week, I used a New Testament verse as my summary verse for all of Ruth chapter 2. That verse was Philippians 4.19, which says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Well, as I said today, we're going to begin studying Ruth chapter 3. In a moment, I'm going to explain why the opening paragraph of chapter 3 is so critical here. But right now, let me give you my New Testament summary verse for Ruth chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. My summary verse also here comes from Philippians 4, and it is verses 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, which say, be anxious, that means be worried, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Jesus. Now, here in Ruth chapter 3, there is somebody with an anxious, a worried heart. She's going to take a step to bring rest and security to that heart. And lo and behold, I think we can learn from this lady. So get your Bible out. Get something on which you can jot some notes. We'll give an outline today. But please, let's find from a real life story how to deal with finding rest for the heart of a follower of Christ. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to make three ways available to you about how you can give to us your name and mailing address. If you'll do that, we'll send that sample packet to you. And just in case you cannot wait to the end of the broadcast, jot down, please, our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. You can give us that request for the sample packet there. One of the tracks that's in that sample packet is this one, What God Wants Everyone to Know. What God Wants Everyone to Know. This is a track I use a lot. There is some basic information in here because this track was designed to be given to somebody who has zero or next to zero background in the Bible. Questions like, who is God? Where did he come from? Where did Adam and Eve live? Who is the devil? And so on. Those kind of questions are brought up here and answered biblically. And some more questions like, what is sin? Why do people die? What happens when people die? Who is Jesus? Now we're getting to the crux of the matter so that we can explain the gospel. Who is Jesus? There's another question asked here. How can you go to heaven? Oh, friend, 
If you're looking for a good, clear gospel tract, a gospel presentation to give to somebody, here it is. What God wants everyone to know. It's in that sample packet. Be ready with pen and paper when our contact information is given. If your Bible is open to the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, here's what the Bible says. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, the her here is Ruth, my daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man, until he hath done eating and drinking." And it shall be, when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he lieth down. Thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. Stop, please, with our reading right there. Most of us who study the Word of God have not had the opportunity to go to Bible school and study the original languages. The New Testament, you probably know, was written in Greek. I am glad for the godly teachers in my Bible college who taught me and and helped me to understand and know Greek. I'm also glad for the new study tools for the Greek language that are available to anybody who loves God's word. You can be a pretty proficient person understanding what the Greek says with these tools. Well, the Old Testament was written almost entirely in the Hebrew language, but I've never studied Hebrew. But what I do have access to are, number one, good Hebrew study aids, and number two, some really godly, smart friends who are extremely proficient in Hebrew. My godly friends and my study aids have made one point very clear to me. Ruth 3, verses 1 to 5, are the structural center of the book of Ruth. Well, let me put it this way. You know what an Indian arrowhead looks like, don't you? The arrowhead has two edges that lead up to a point. It is this shape of the letter V that you are going to quickly recognize only the letter V is laying on its side. It's that arrowhead. The book of Ruth is put together structure-wise like that arrowhead. At the point are verses 1 through 5 of chapter 3. There are 10 key sections in Ruth leading up to that point, and there are 10 key sections leading away from that point. Now, why am I telling you all this? The decision and plan that we're going to find here in verses 1 to 5 are what all of chapters 1 and 2 have been leading up to. And it is this decision and plan in chapters 3, 1 to 5, from which the rest of chapter 3 and 4 are going to unfold. Now, all right, so what's happening here in chapter 3, verses 1 to 5? My title for this paragraph, this section, is this word, consultation. It's the consultation of Naomi. As the chapter continues, I'm going to use not only the word consultation, I'm also going to use the word compliance, the compliance of Ruth, and I'm going to use the word confidence, the confidence of Boaz. And to walk through these first five verses, I'm going to use a series of words, all beginning with a letter S, like in the word soap, and my first word is the word security. It's the word security. Look again at verse one, which says, then Naomi, her mother-in-law said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? The key word in that verse is the word rest. This same English word is found back in chapter 1 and verse 9. There Naomi urges Ruth and her her other daughter-in-law there, these two widowed daughter-in-laws, to go back home to their parents and find long-term security. She had no security she could offer them, but of course, Ruth, she stays with Naomi, and they both go to Bethlehem. 
But here, still, Naomi's heart passion is to find rest, long-term security for Ruth. She wants Ruth to have a family. She's hoping Ruth is going to find a new husband, have children, and be secure, have rest for the length of her days. Naomi wants Ruth to be secure and to have rest. By the way, the Hebrew word translated rest here was used for the very first time back in Genesis chapter 8. That's the story of Noah and the ark. There at the end of the flooding time, Noah sent out a dove. You probably remember the story. But the dove, when it was first sent out, found no resting place. Now, this dove that was sent out by Noah was looking for a place to physically rest. Here in the book of Ruth, Naomi was seeking to find physical and family rest for Ruth. But this very idea of rest is also applied to believers in a spiritual way. Over in the book of the Psalms, Psalm 116, verse 7, here's what we read. Again, Psalm 116, verse 7 says, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Now, we can all understand Naomi's desire to find earthly rest for Ruth. Well, apply that same passion to the Lord Jesus and his desire for you, believer. Our Savior died to give us rest. Yes, rest from our condemnation because of our sin guiltiness, but also he wants to give us daily heart rest. That is a sense of peace deep in our soul, in the midst of all the junk happening in our lives, all the junk happening around our lives. Now, remember, at the beginning, I said I had that New Testament verse that comes into play here as my summary for Ruth chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Those summary verses, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, again say, be anxious, be worried for nothing. Be worried about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep, shall garrison, shall, shall put a security around your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. If you're listening today, and you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, you're subject to the same junk happening in your life and around your life as every believer is. Every person, saved or lost, I don't care what culture they're in, lives in a world where there's junk and yuck to live with. Glory to God, there are some good things that happen. We've got a lot of junk to deal with. But you see, those that have Christ as their Savior those who by faith have received him as their savior from sin, they have somebody to help bring rest, not only eternally from hell, but daily rest in their soul. Like we're told there in Psalm 116, return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Dear friend who does not know Christ as savior, the Lord has been bountiful. He's been kind and gracious to you. But until you receive his grace by faith, receive Christ as your Savior, you can't have any of his rest at all. Why don't you receive him right now? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.